Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, everybody, depending on where you're joining us from. A welcome back to another Snap IR live stream. And today we have an incredible crew. If you have joined us last time, Team Jevils was online. We actually have another team member from the Jevils team who will give away even more secrets and tips and tricks. So, um, you know, welcome in. We're going to give you a quick preview of what we're going to do. We'll do a quick introduction. And then, of course, we'll jump into the project itself. And we may also have a special guest for you today from the SNAP AR engineering team, the very person who was working on the template that we will be using today. So stay tuned for more. Uh, and without further ado, let's jump in and kick it off. Zuzi, welcome. Thank you so much for bringing your team back on the stream. Uh, let's do a round of introductions and then we'll jump right in. Thank you. Hi, everyone. And thank you so much for joining today again. Uh, it's great to be here. Uh, so I'm the co-founder of Jevels, um, and I'm really super excited to talk to you today. And uh, thanks again, Elena, and of course, uh, Omri as well, and the entire SNAP community for having us. Um, so Jevels stands for Virtual Jewels, and we have been decorating people in the in the virtual reality, but most importantly in the augmented reality spaces for the past two years. And uh, we collaborate with super talented designers um, from all over the world to bring their creations to life. So just like Stella and Lauren here, two fantastic designers um, who are going to show us the, the process of creation today. Uh, in total, we created um, in the past two years um, approximately 150 AR filters, um, mostly on Snapchat, with virtual jewelry. And these have been worn, um, some of them, by even millions of millions of times. So we are really proud to um, to be here and to also collaborate with the Snap AR community. So during our workshop today, Stella and Lauren will guide us all through the design process of one of the recent designs, uh, the octopus earrings. And we will show you then step by step the Lens Studio, how we created the Snap Lens uh, with all kinds of features, uh, just like physics. Uh, it includes hair occlusion and tracking. And um, yeah, we will even uh, show you ray tracing. And I'm really excited also that Omri is here because uh, Omri is the, is the specialists or the, the engineer behind this uh, template. So uh, it's going to be a great discussion. But uh, yeah, Stella and Lauren, please, uh, I invite you to introduce yourself and guide us through the process. Hey, everyone. My name is Stella. Uh, I call myself a metaverse designer because I am literally between um, doing creative things like developing an amazing collection with this amazing team in wearable jewelry, um, but I'm also an apprentice in token engineering, very much involved in the Web3 space. So yeah, hence I call myself Metaverse Designer. If you have any better ideas, please feel free to reach out. Uh, it's a work in progress. I'm super happy and excited to be here today with the Snap AR community. Hello, everyone. Great to be here also and joining uh, such an amazing team and really excited also to see more on the AR side. Um, I am Lauren Ketcher. Um, I also go by Kahlo. Um, I think as we've kind of transitioning into this Web3 digital space, it's a really an opportunity to kind of make a new identity. And so I took that by creating this uh, this alter ego Kahlo. So um, I come from a de fashion design background. I've been in the industry for about 14 years. Um, I've been in New York, London, and more recently Paris. And I came across Web3 and like 3D creation and this digital space about two years ago. Um, I was looking for ways to make the industry more sustainable and inclusive and got was really excited when I came across these tools um, like I'm also wearing right now. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll be sharing just the process today um, from the, the design, the how we made decisions, um, how does that look across different um, profiles within the team um, and uh, excited to be here. So maybe I can already get started. Um, hopefully you can see the screen okay. Um, so 
basically, this is a tool that we use just um, between uh, the team. So you're getting some inside access right now. Um, but so it's called Mila Note, but you can really use any kind of tool like Figma um, or whatever works to have this um, opportunity to share and collaborate. Um, for me, I started to also use this with freelance clients, and it's really, I think, important to be able to clearly communicate visually um, because, right, we a lot of us have different backgrounds, whether it is in tech, uh, doing the, the processes that um, are very important, but then also there's business backgrounds and design, and so it's really great to see all of this come together. So our process um, comprised of different steps. And so what we're also doing um, with uh, when we created this collection, um, especially for digital jewelry, is that we're trying to find the line between realism and fantasy. So like di digital fashion is really a big movement right now. It's shaking up the entire space about how do you create your identity in this virtual space um, using tools, uh, right, like 3D or even blockchain? So our process is pretty similar than the traditional kind of fashion design process, but there's new elements added in. So uh, we began with like uh, initial research, also understanding like what is the client brief because we are making sure this is a combination of different perspectives and viewpoints, um, and then also what is the story so that's something that's also really important to keep in mind i think as we go into digital to not lose certain aspects um, that make a design more well-rounded so uh, we begin there it's really a brainstorming session um, i'll show you the boards um, also for these steps uh, after that we kind of um, go through our research refine images um, it comes always from a variety of sources to make sure um, the end result is not really a direct translation of something it's something that's really been extracted from different sources, refined, um, and then creates a really clear, strong storyline. Uh, so that's the second step. Um, and then something that's new for us, and I think for everyone, uh, is this ability to reference AI technology to um, do things more quickly, do things um, in ways that you would never even consider. And so there's so many new tools popping up for that. Um, and I think also Stella feels really strong that like, we're not using AI as kind of the end game. It's really part of the process. So um, it's a tool, it's not the final result. So I think that is something important to note. Uh, so we went there, we got some more inputs. And so then we created collages from that. So that's like using our brains <laughs> from all of these different sources. Um, um, and Oh, sorry. Is, is everything okay? Thumbs up, Let's if you can hear me. We lost it for a second, but I think you're back. Let's just maybe hold on a second. Okay. How's it going? I think, I think we're back. Good, back? Good. Awesome. Okay, cool. I think we might have lost connection, but I'm not sure where you lost me. But um, I keep going. Uh, so then, so uh, that's the design process. Oh, you've lost the screen. Um... Sorry. Okay. So, um, okay. I'm not sure if you guys can see the screen or not, but I, I will start sharing soon if you can see it. Um, so the design process is, it merges, right? Traditional way plus this new innovative way. Stella will then talk about how she takes the 2D um, and then translates that into 3D, and then we'll go to the filter component um, of how that becomes uh, interactive. So. Oh, hey, I, okay. think we're, I think we're back to normal, Lauren. Thanks. Yeah, so okay. <laughs> I'm getting messages. <laughs> I might be lost. You know, this happens always in the middle. Uh, you can hear me okay now? Yeah, all is good. Okay, cool. All right. So 
that hopefully, well, I'm not sure what was heard, what was not, but I'll start sharing um, visually what we've done the, on the board. So like I mentioned, um, whenever starting a project, at least also in like a freelance component, it's really important to um, know what is the brief, like what are we trying to do? What is the end result? Um, what kind of like design um, codes um, do we want to include? So um, that is like a big component to start with. Um, how does it work like uh, structurally? Uh, who's doing what? Um, what is the timeline in order to kind of all have clear expectations around what is delivered? So we began um, really by a story. So um, we were thinking, uh, what does it look like, right, to uh, have d jewelry, but then in a, like an interactive digital component? Um, so like, I don't know if you can see, but like, so for these earrings, um, there's something happening on the bottom that like they're flashing. And so they're, they're like, uh, Guys, give us just one second. We're having a wee bit of technical difficulties at the moment. Um, Lauren's screen for some reason is not coming through for us, even though we did come in in our technical check. So give us a second. Um, but I guess in the meantime, um, Lauren and uh, Stella, Susie, maybe we can, uh, I guess, direct the conversation to our viewers a little bit, because I think that the conversation of AI that you're bringing up, right, that it's not a final outcome, but it's rather sort of the step that you take in helping you uh, with your creative vision. And I asked uh, actually our viewers in chat if they're using AI to help them uh, in the AR process. Um, I've recently actually just made a lens myself where I created a whole bunch of sweaters um, using Dali, you know, and I'm not gonna lie, some of them I thought to myself, I could wear that in real life. That actually looked kind of good, right? So I think there's, it's it's a really interesting, um, you know, idea. and. To kind of see that you know brands and, and companies like you actually use that as a way to assist you guys in your process is really incredible right so thank you so much for sharing that and you know just um you know there's so much new tech popping out uh, popping up right and uh, why not take advantage of it especially if it helps you to achieve this high fidelity incredible uh, final outcomes too and i also realized that i don't think we um gave uh Omri, a space to introduce himself. Omri, do you want to uh, take the floor for a second? Tell us um, what you do here at Snap AR, and you know, uh, and then we'll try to see if we can get back to Lauren's screen. I'm um, sure, of course. Uh, so, hi, I'm Omri. Uh, really excited to be here with you guys today. And I'm an AR engineer here at Snap, uh, which means that when a new technology starts to mature, I will get it and uh, validate it. And then I will uh, write a template for it and a component so our users uh, will be able to use this technology, uh, hopefully in the easiest, uh, most convenient way uh, to integrate it into their uh, new lenses. Um, I really love this. Thank you so much for being here, Omri. And uh, I think that um, you worked on a number of, um, of things that are currently available in public version of Lens Studio. So it's really awesome to have you here. I'm sure we're going to get some awesome tips and tricks from you. Uh, but for now, um, let me just check in with our stream producer really quickly and maybe see if, Zuzi, if you have access to that board, maybe we can uh, share on your screen too, so we can um, continue to, uh, to discuss the creative process of your team. Yeah, that's, that's uh, actually a great idea. Uh, I don't have it open right now, so give me just a couple of seconds and maybe I can... Uh... If you guys want, I can bridge that with the AI conversation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so I, I think the reason why Lauren mentioned it specifically like this, I do have very strong feelings about this. I have integrated, I think, AI in all of my workflow flows by now. Um, but I do believe that, um, you know, if you want to create something that also comes from you and the story you want to tell, right, then you cannot rely 100% on AI because AI was fed with data, right? And that data is already existent data. Now we can have like a very long discussion about, you know, ownership, copyright law, like all of these things, right? But fact is you scrape sites off the internet and you essentially feed that to the AI. Some, you know, organizations, they're, they're, like, they're caring more for where those sources are from and, <clears throat> you know, who they essentially 
<laughs> what kind of data they feed to the AI, but others don't. So I think uh, as a creator specifically, because we are very sensitive to the idea of someone uh, plagiarizing our work, right? Uh, so I think, you know, an AI is being trained based on human data, essentially. And I think if we want to ensure that eventually, you know, maybe an AI just becomes sentient, right? We don't know. Maybe it does. So judging from, you know, being trained on human data, why would the AI feel any different than us creators about being ripped off, right? And not being like um, mentioned for its creatorship, essentially. So I just think we, as we, you know, as this technology is still fairly young, I just think we should be very sensitive, sensi sensible in using it. We should probably like start setting standards that we feel comfortable with, right? Also in the long run. And this is why I think like AI is a fantastic tool. We're also doing a workshop next week, actually, on that specific topic. Um, but I do think it comes, you know, with also a lot of self-responsibility, as does everything in a new or next layer of the internet. Okay, that, that, finished. <laughs> all right, Lauren, Stella, uh, we are back with the board. So let's get back to it. Everybody, thanks so much for hanging here with us while we were uh, working out our little snafu, a little technical snafu. So we're back. So walk us through uh, your incredible process, uh, because last time you shared it, you know, I think we... A lot of viewers found it really, um, you know, valuable to see the process. So, sure. I, please, can you tell me if uh, this is you wanted yes, to talk about this page? Um, so, if you go back you to that main page, can, you um, hear me? can anyone hear Lauren? Because I cannot. Oh, yeah. no. Okay, good. Okay, I, I, of course. Let me let me check. Actually, can you go back to the board before Javel's yeah. Snapchat? Okay, perfect. And I think we were, we had already seen the mood board, right? So then that would be a try collection plan two, actually. Um, um, the third oh, column, so third oh, box. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So here is a, a little bit of the process that we did where we, you can, you can see, you know, these are like, I rendered out essentially a, a, a humanoid face, right? And then we started composing all of these designs on 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 this like uh, image uh, out of the different elements that we get from AI. But even before that, we already had a vision on the pieces that we wanted to create, right? That's always very important. And then if you go further to the right, yeah, this is uh, okay, perfect. Just push off over all to the right if you want but here's like some of the some of the different elements that you can see and then if you go further to the right this is where the octopus earring is that's the mock-up for the octopus earring so if you do double click on that you can see the mock-up in big and people can get an impression of this was actually the the mock-up and then if you you know if you guys have already tried out the design which i hope you did and you're tagging all of us um and you see that we actually came very close. We left out some of the details of this um, because they, honestly, if it's a jewelry piece, sometimes the details don't show so well, especially if you're far away, right? Because you're not making close-ups like this in AR. So they are sometimes just not worth, essentially, the translation, right? Because they all cost you geometry and essentially computing power. So there's always like, um, a sensible decision where you're like, okay, weighing this is important and this piece is actually not as important. Um, what also helps is working out textures. So there is actually in Substance Designer, there's a wonderful lens template that you can use. And um, you can use that to uh, create like random amount of really cool Substance Designer textures or download them from the uh, from the Substance Library, which I did in my case, I didn't make it. Uh, I made one for Full Bloom for one of the other collections, but for the squid specifically for these like tassels, that um, that texture I actually took from the Substance Library and I just slightly uh, changed it up. And yeah, maybe we can go to the next board. Let me go back to see. And 
if we go to, I want to say the modeling board, that should be the second one as well. We have, obviously, we have infinite amounts of, uh, of data on this board, yeah, this one. Uh, but let's just stick to the, to the squid, my little squid friend. Um, so if you go again all the way to the right, I believe, then we should find everything concerning the squid. And this is like, you know, this is the, the pre-rendering to see if everything fits and works. And this is also a video where uh, essentially Barbie and Susie for Travels are telling me, hey, you need to position this at the world center. So it's not going to get very difficult for us. So guys, remember this, like put your 3D um, mesh at the world center and um, make sure to to apply all transforms before you export it. Um, so these videos, they, they have been great helpers in, in our like way of communication. And this is also where further below, I, I'm uploading essentially the, you can double click on this. I mean, I'm probably saying something, I would say, probably. But if you double click on this, it opens up and bigger and you can show a little bit of this. So this is the 3D mesh. And you can see in this version, I haven't yet applied the curves from the eyes. So they're just like randomly <laughs> sitting. They're looking, looking a little bit weird, like being stuck on the, on the, on the actual gem, on the body gem of the, of the script. Um, but yeah, it's, it's kind of a pre-version to discuss, like, is this like roughly what we want to see? And does this work? And then there's another video uh, us trying to figure out if the weight painting is set in the right manner. So, yeah, it's actually a good replacement right now for not being able to share my share my screen with the with the actual Blender file. You can, if you want, you can get out of there and we can move to the next chapter. Are there, Elena, are there any questions about this part? Right now, there are no questions, but I actually just wanted to remind um, our viewers too that if you wanted to uh, dig a little bit deeper into how Stella, uh, you know, made this in Blender, uh, you should be able to check out the previous live stream because um, actually Blender was part of our um, flow last time. So I'll drop a link to that if you guys want to check that out. But um, you know, if you do have any questions, do feel free to ask. We are not trying to save them for the end of the stream, so feel free to just jump in and ask anything as we go, and we'll make sure to uh, yeah. ask. Yes, uh, right now we're good to go, so we can move on to the next next topic. Yeah, so you can go back to the main folder. Thank you, Susie, for doing this. <laughs> you, you're the stream hero <laughs> it's today. It's a little bit taller than expected, but uh, if you navigate me, uh, or what do you want to talk about? It's great. Uh, yeah, if you go all the way to the right of the board, I think we're, we, we're going to jump a, a little bit stuff because we want to get to the heartbeat of yeah. this. And then if you go to final renders, maybe. Um, so maybe I can I... add something for the blender part. Oh, yes. Um, so in our documentation, you can download a 3D model of the face with the ears. And so if you import it into Blender, you can uh, model the earring in the right scale to the uh, one that we use in Blend Studio. Always a good idea. <laughs> That's actually a good idea. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't consider this. I just made a human, <laughs> totally for nothing. Um, yeah, and uh, the last part is, I guess, uh, I'm I'm very huge on storytelling. So I always think it's nice if you bind in what you create into like a setting. Um, so I kind of made these um, renderings of the different collections we did together, where you can, well, kind of like better understand like what was the idea right all of this is in like regards to javels and we're trying to uh, stimulate people to thinking more in a digital or even just purely digital way and so we can you know we kind of clustered us in different topics and um, well those are all the different renderings and this is embarrassing totally okay fun. cool anyhow that is the creative part and now comes the very technical, but also creative part in Lens. Thank you, Susie. Thank you very much, Stella. It was really fantastic. Um, I will close this down. Uh, great. Are there any questions on the designing process? I'm, I'm so sorry that we lost Stella, even though Stella, 
uh, Lauren. Uh, Lauren, now you're here. Would you like to add something? Can you hear me? Can we hear you, maybe? Yeah, Lauren, we can hear you. Yes, because I, I know Stella couldn't before. So I don't know. Just no, you're, Elena can. You're Thumbs coming, up if you can hear me. <laughs> through loud and clear on the stream. So yeah, go okay. ahead. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward also to seeing more on the lens process. But um, yeah, I think, I mean, Stella went through uh, really well the, the boards. Um, and also maybe something to add uh, that you could maybe do as like a tool um, within your own like design process as you go through uh, research to collage or design creation. And then, from, so that's more than maybe the 2D or maybe you go directly to 3D um, and then to uh, lens. Um, but you might want to think about like different kind of criteria. So we have this kind of system where it's a review to, to determine like how successful like is this uh, digital piece so the first is like the design so does it exceed the original like 2d vision in the quality interpretation um does it align with like the brand message um is it original because like i mentioned before there's this interesting uh parallel between um how far can you push it digitally while still making it relatable so um, like for these earrings, like they're, I'm comfortable wearing them on a call. And so there you might be wearing, like there might be crazy things, but like uh, there's a line I think that's really interesting where it's still wearable, but it does things that you can't have uh, in physical life. So first is like kind of the design criteria. Uh, the second would be the wearability of like the filter, the, the jewelry. Um, so like how well does the utility function? So uh, for example, like, the bottom, like, do they move um, in line with like the face? Like, is it convincing? Um, so like when I enter calls, people are like, you gotta give me a face to so, like, is it real? Is it not? And it starts like really interesting conversations. So I'd say that's a, another factor. Um, the third would be uh, something kind of like, I guess an interoperability test or um, does like, the piece work well in the utility that it has. So today we're focusing on AR. So um, are you pushing the limits of AR? Like, uh, is it interactive? Is it, uh, does it move? Does it flash? Does it, um, right? Because there's so many opportunities now that we have by using these tools um, that we can connect to things that are already important in fashion um, and identity. And so how do you push that with filters and with AR? And the last one is a uh, desirability. So this is something, right? It's subjective um, for design. We all have different tastes. Um, there's different types of fashion. There's luxury, there's premium, there's ready to wear. Um, but do you want to wear it? Because this is the ultimate test, I think, of something is like, do I wear it? And like, does someone else wear it? Because I get uh, a good satisfaction when someone is interested in using something I create. So I think that's kind of another level past art. And that for me, that's what design is about. So those are kind of different criteria. Uh, we took our models and for, for some of them and kind of graded them um, on what we thought was most successful. I know Stella is really excited about the octopus ones. Um, I have a different taste. So like I'm more into like less color. And so, um, yeah, it might be a helpful kind of tool to help you check off um, what's successful and test it and see who uses it and maybe ask why. So hopefully you could hear me. <laughs> Lauren, actually, one of the things they mentioned, well, the one of the first times when Zuzi and I got on a call, Zuzi was wearing one of the Paris of Jevil's earrings. And I did have to pause for a second just to think, you know, were those real or were those not? And the other thing that we talked about in last stream is that oftentimes when I see what you guys create, right, and I try it in AR and Snapchat, I kind of wish to myself that like there was a button in the lens that said purchase, you know, like in real life, right? Because I think to myself, I 100% would wear it like and I can think of, you know, the event that would wear it to and whatnot. But something Zuzi brought up too is that a lot of these pieces, you know, they are bigger than life. They would not be wearable in the real world. Like your ears would fall off because they are so heavy, right? So it's amazing that you have this continuity of like, I would wear it every day. I would wear it on every call throughout the day. So, you know, I feel a little bit extra special today, right? Or, okay, this could not exist in real life. And therefore, like, I am so excited about the ability of wearing it in this augmented reality, right? So it's sort of like, you have a little bit of everything and your creative process is unlimited by what you would like to put out for your consumer, right? Do they want it to be 
hyper realistic or do they want it to be oh wow this is clearly only available and could exist in a virtual and augmented world you know so i love all of these aspects and you guys do it so well right um just kudos to your creative team and your process and just to let you know too that our viewers also agree um we have a whole bunch of comments on the presentation and still everybody loved the design and the presentation of the octopus i did drop the link to the lens too uh, so people can check out the octopus earrings as well as all the other creations on Jevil's page um so yeah go check them out you know wear them um throughout the day on your you know on your augmented reality uh journey as you um as you guys feel like you need to add a little extra spice to your life but yeah thank you so much for being here and sharing it with us your work is absolutely incredible we're so honored to have you yeah um you're absolutely right um you know, you know it's um it's all of these different aspects i think and uh well i would like to have it in real life but this is not the the aim of the virtual jewelry it it is it is great that it's not possible to to wear it in real life because it's so special it can have um, special effects uh, some uh, animations um it's 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 so big that it's not going uh, going to be possible to wear it in, in real life and of course the aspect of sustainability as well this is uh, where we also focus with channels um so yeah we are uh, really excited about the technology snap uh is bringing uh and uh, also, uh, Amri, um, by uh, your development skills, uh, enabling us to, to bring these beautiful creations uh, to, to life and uh, to make them wearable. Um, so, yeah, it's it's all kinds of different aspects. And uh, we were really happy to uh, collaborate with uh, Snap to create two uh, collections in the past months. And you have seen the, the mood boards or the, the designing process. Um, shown by uh, Lauren and Stella, and we can continue with the uh, octopus earrings, how we uh, put them into the, uh, the lens studio and into, into a beautiful lens. Um, so um, just before we kicked off the work on our co uh, collections, uh, the earring template from Snap was launched. Um, and um, you, you will find it in the templates uh, library. Um, so my recommendation number one, is uh, please download the template and like that you will have access to all the resources such as materials and scripts and even if you are working on another project it's going to be there in your lens studio already. Uh, it's, it's easy and straightforward to recreate the functionalities in another template so just follow the instructions in the documentation. I think this is also what Omri would maybe say. <laughs> Uh, and uh, they are always linked in the templates, so it's very useful. Uh, I don't know, Amri, do you want to add something on the templates in general? Yeah, we, we can jump, jump into your process, easy. I also love the fact oh, yeah? that... Okay. Yeah, but, and I love but, the fact yeah. that you can use the template because so, you know, to me it's so Exactly. Clever. So let me just open the template. Uh, you will find it in the template. Actually, when you open the Lens Studio, uh, there has been a new update and... Uh, uh, yesterday with uh, gem rendering uh, and uh, gemstone uh, rendering and some some materials which I haven't had the time to explore since yesterday but um, we should uh, plan a new session on uh, gems and uh, yeah <laughs> gemstones uh, to, to explore this more but here uh, under recent templates you will find the earring try on template so let's recreate the octopus earrings using this template. Um, yeah, it's loading. Um, uh huh. Okay. But I, <laughs> I was scared that it crashed. Great, beautiful. And you see me also in the screen. It's beautiful that it's working. Because last time we we had the problem that it was not working, and that's why. Uh, we wanted to guide it through the process um, again. So uh, when you open the template, you will you will see that there are three different um, earring styles, um, like uh, templates. So uh, when you get a chance, please um, have a look at all of them. Uh, you have uh, uh, one, two, and three. I would like to uh, continue with the 
example number three, try on experience, because he, it has all of the features I want to work with, uh, just as uh, the hair occluder, the hand physics, uh, and so on. So I will just shut off um, the example one and turn on the example number three. And you will see I have a different um, earrings. Yeah, so we have uh, worked mostly with with this um, try on experience. Um, exactly, so now I have to um, uncheck. I will just um, continue with the silver earrings template with the physics setup. And um, the, the special thing about this uh, template is that it works with uh, ear binding, not head binding, uh, because before just the earrings that uh, Lauren is wearing, we were uh, putting in the lens studio with head binding and uh, with the ear binding template, it makes, makes it sound so much easier uh, because uh, it tracks um, much better to different faces before. It was different if somebody had a broader face or, or um, thinner face, you know, uh, sometimes it didn't fit properly. But um, now we are, we will be parenting the earrings directly under the ear binding on, and the ear binding component attaches its hierarchy to a landmark on either left or right ear, as you see it here. So um, the ear landmark determines the position on the ear. Uh, and you can choose from different positions. Um, so you can choose lobe on front, back, uh, scapha helix. Actually, these are all the parts of the anatomy of the external ear. Uh, maybe Omri, uh, I would be really interested how you um, how you define this, and if you would like to add something to the development of of the template of the ear binding. Um, first of all, it was a great project to work on, uh, I think, advanced AR uh, in a small bit, but uh, in the right direction. Like, I think we're the first company that has uh, ear uh, tracking. And it's a similar setup to what you would do in a manual way, um, just uh, knowing in advance where the exact landmarks are. And towards the end of the session, it might uh, show some advantage, uh, some some new features that we added. Oh, okay, great. Um, so the ear binding, yeah, as I said, is a it's a scene object as you would do it manually. So you can also create a scene object and uh, assign a new component with ear binding. But for for this project, let's uh, just work with the template. Um, and um, I will uh, drop the earrings into the resources um, files. Oops, this is my file. I import it. Susie, so, while we're waiting, I'm going to read out one of the comments. Flavia mentioned that. They were wearing digital jewelry every day in their calls, um, but now that snap camera is down, it's not possible anymore. We're so excited to hear that Lavi was using that feature every day. I'm honestly, I was using the jewelry um, lenses quite a bit, so Flavia, I'm right there with you. Um, I hope that one day it'll be back. <laughs> hey, I second or third that or whatever it was. It was a really I good feature. We need to work on that. I think. <laughs> Yeah, and it's also, a, it yeah. makes everyone want to try it. Yeah, he was so. waking up at 8.59 and turning on snap camera and being ready for the, <laughs> <laughs> uh, for the meeting right away. Okay, so I have it in my resources here. Um, I need to take the, the earring uh, here. Uh, actually, I did I turn off? Yeah, I'm going to turn off the, the template earring. And what I need to do with this one, uh, because it's uh, I'm working with the example three camera, I need to uh, shift uh, and assign it to example three. Like this, you see the earring already attached to my to my ear. Um, yeah, I can I can do. The same thing right now. I uh, actually there is also a way uh, just to copy it 
and do it um, and duplicate it, I think, right? Uh, but I like to do it twice. <laughs> um, so, okay. Now I'm wearing the earrings, so, so you can see the whole process. I'm wearing the earrings and actually uh, we can do it right now or at the end. Um, because the earring is not facing to the front, right? Normally. Uh, so we we just might to uh, need to turn it a little bit. So I think minus 40 degrees and you see it already turned the outside and I will do the same as well. Um, it's rotation 30 or 40 degrees. Yeah, now it's best. Okay. Uh, so as the next step, we want to make the um, earrings be a physics body. Uh, so we want them to react to physics uh, movement and also touch. Um, so we need to click on the armature and um, exactly. And we need to add the component, which is physics body. Great. I will just turn off dynamic and turn on intangible. Uh, perfect. And uh, honestly, I, I don't know how to say this, and but you, you see that um, my fear. I'm sorry. I'm just saying, like, I, I don't know if this is understandable, but as you know, someone who makes the 3D model, this part is like the really exciting part for me. The one that Susie is showing right now, because it brings these static things to life, right? It's like, I don't know, it's, it's the modern way of magic. Sorry, that's all I wanted to add. Thank you, Stone. Yeah, this is really actually playing around a lot. <laughs> We uh, didn't understand it right away um, as well. So uh, also, for instance, the shape type, uh, we, we work with cylinder. It's also possible to work with the mesh directly. Um, and um, yeah. So we want to um, then um, work on the script. So uh, the script is in the anchor here. And uh, the anchor has to be uh, in the same hierarchy as the as the ear binding. So we are working in the template. We will just use the anchor, which is already provided. So we will replace the physics body in base anchor with our armature. So I will uh, come here and put the armature into the base anchor. Um, and we want to um to connect all the all the um joint joints as well of the of the armature uh which are here so i just put the each joint or the bones how we put them already or stella uh and lauren in blender into the into the joint parts. Right now we see that it's uh, flying around and decomposing, but don't worry, everything is on plan. Uh, this is maybe the most challenging part of the earring template because um, here it, we, we really need to, <laughs> to play around, but with a bit of patience, it is uh, done quite easily and in a matter of minutes. So you have to change the uh, body shape parameters. And uh, after trying out a little bit, uh, we, the, the cylinder length needs to be much lower and also the radius so that it works properly. And now you see that the earring is already moving as we would like to, according to physics. As the template already includes uh, hand tracking, Huh? What's going on? Oh uh, no, I need to. Uh, yeah, uh, before I need to do 
something more. But I also wanted to show you uh, here that you can look at the constraints and colliders, and this is really helpful to see how the earrings will then move. Um, so we work also with um, with these two checkboxes. That's uh, the correct size and and uh, length. Uh, exactly, and. Um, Now you can always refresh and it should move well now. Great. Um, let me just um, quickly talk about damping. Um, maybe also we would like to add something uh, later um, because uh, damping will uh, determine the, how much energy is lost, or lost between the, the frame updates. So uh, lower values will set the earrings to move more freely and higher values will make it feel heavier and uh, move it more slowly. So uh, the, the more to the right, the stiffer the earring is and so on. Uh, so we can, yeah, we can look at it. Yeah, now it's moving slowly, see, and so on. Now it's moving, yeah, so refresh. Now it's moving more freely. Great. Um, did I want to add something here? Um, yeah, this is how physics works. And, ah, I know why it's not working because our hand tracking is turned off. Um, hand physics. Let me just turn it on. It's also already in the template, and now it should work. Yeah, great. Now I can touch my earring as if it was real. Great. Um, I can do the same for the uh, for the right lobe. Right? I did it in the left lobe. Uh, if you have any questions um, in the meantime, feel free. Um, we uh, don't have any questions on stream, Zuzi, but I actually did want to ask. So, you know, I would love to know whether or not you had technical background before you started Devils and, you know, seeing you creating um, your lenses, um, you know, did you did you study? Did you have any programming background, uh, anything at all? Or did you just decided that you wanted to do this and you went out there and taught yourself? Um, thank you for your question. So Devils uh, started out of passion for fashion and um, augmented reality uh, with my sister, uh, Barbie, who is not here unfortunately today, and, and myself. And it was all a learning pro process. So uh, myself, I'm actually a pharmacist and uh, I work in a pharmaceutical company um, by day. <laughs> By night, it's it's this, wow. and um, but um, Barbie um, has um, has done some uh, some uh, programming training, so she's more versed in these um, yeah programs, and we have um, studied the the manuals, the templates. We have listened to many podcasts, uh, to to many trainings, to yeah, and it has been hours and hours of. Uh, trying out what is possible and um, yeah, learning also from the from the entire community, also from Stella Lauren, but also from other experts from the Snapchat community, which is which that. is amazing because everybody is so happy to share their knowledge and there is still a long way to go. We still need to learn, learn a lot. So that's why I'm so happy that also you and Amri and Stella and Lauren could join us uh, today because yeah, it's a learning process. So yeah, there is still a lot to do. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. I think that it's really important for you know our viewers to hear that you don't have to come in with a you know like front end or back end engineer or a programmer or any sort of super technical background. That as long as you know you're willing to learn, there is a lot out there. People are creating lenses. They're breaking it down. They're sharing their experiences. And, you know, we are constantly looking to create more learning materials for you, but nothing beats just opening Lens Studio and messing with it, right? And things will break and sometimes they'll crash. Don't forget to save your project. 
Uh, but, you know, just get in there, get your hands dirty and then try to, you know, bring your ideas to life. And maybe the first couple lenses you make won't be the best and you won't even publish them. Right. But keep on going. I always say that nothing beats practice. Right. But it, I, I had no idea that you're a pharmacist, Susie. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it's uh, and and that's why I, w I was so uh, fascinated by the by by the earring template as well because you have all of the components, <laughs> the anatomy and so on. Uh, yeah, and I think also in healthcare, uh, AR has a big potential. AR is uh, is the future. Yeah. <laughs> Let me um, and make sure nobody is asking questions. I think we're I think we're good for now. Fantastic. So, um, as I said, the, the hand tracking is already uh, in the template. Um, we just need to activate it. I didn't change anything. Maybe uh, there are some some tricks uh, I don't know about. There is a definitely uh, a lot written in the documentation. Um, I can actually I copied my own the link here. Uh, I can copy it into the um, into the chat so that uh, everybody can can go through it. And um, so also about the hair occluder and so on, how you can adapt uh, the different uh, parameters and so on uh, into the hair occluder. Um, yeah, and um, exactly. I'm wondering what what next uh, step would be if we want to talk about a little bit about uh, ray tracing. In the original template, we haven't introduced our ray tracing yet, but we can uh, have a look at it now. How it is done, or Absolutely. If you guys want to jump into that, I think we can absolutely talk about it. I think the octopus earring certainly offers an opportunity for, for um, you know, enablement of reflections. Yeah. Amri, would you like to add something or? No. So the the thing I see actually in the I don't know why. Normally, in the project info, I should be able to uh, to check the box for ray tracing, but now I don't see it here. Um, I think you should save the project first. Ah, yeah, I need to save it first. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah. mm. Thank you. <laughs> okay, project info. I think it's because I don't know why. The size is a little bit larger. Mm, this is where we can talk about our remote app. Last well, time it worked. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's going on here. Amri, um, all eyes on you as our snap yarn engineer. Yeah. <laughs> Which version is it? Like, uh, ray tracing was another right, so no. I downloaded this in the last one. Uh, I downloaded the last one yesterday because I wanted to uh, try the gemstone rendering. So, probably 4.43? 4.40? Yeah. 43 or 43. There we go, guys. 
this is what happens when you're live you know it's not pre-recorded <laughs> otherwise we would edit this part out but no nope, we are live but you can watch the part with ray tracing in the last streaming yeah <laughs> Actually, there I, uh, I showed a little bit how to uh, turn it on and how to uh, change the parameters. So maybe we can speak, skip it because I don't want to take uh, time from Omri's part. Sure, sure. And I'll make sure to link that uh, previous live stream too. Um, I believe it should yeah. now be enabled for chapters. So you should be able to find the chapter that talks about ray tracing. Mm -hmm. So go ahead and give it a watch. The link is now available in the chat. All right, Omri. Um, so and it's a try and error um, this process. So it's a lot of pro playing around. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Omri, um, so what Thank were you going to show today? What did you prepare for our viewers? Um, the floor is yours. <laughs> Let's check out your lens studio. Cool. Um, so did we switch to uh, my lens studio? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Great. Um, so first of all, it's very uh, impressive to see all the lenses that you've all created. Uh, I think over 30 lenses already. So it's really amazing. And we've been touched uh, with Javel and other uh, uh, partners about the earring template and our technology, and we were looking for ways to make it even uh, better. So I'm here today to show you a few of our new components um, that should make your life easier when you're working on the earrings, iron templates, or jewelry in general. Um, so the first thing I want to talk about is a new custom component called the head visibility that should help you get better results uh, for the hair occlusion. So first, okay, so my lens video crashed, so let me open it again real quick. <laughs> no worries. We'll be back with Lens Studio in just a second. So in the meanwhile, I'll tell that I'm going to show a new component for head visibility. Um, an easier way to set up physics and a cool new component uh, for Zoom. And Amri, you don't mean Zoom as the tool that we use for conference calling. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, I forgot cool to talk Zoom about the whole Zoom. Yeah, that's also a nice feature. Yeah. Okay, so the project is uh, up again, if you guys can see. Cool. Yeah. Um, so first, let me change the preview video to one that Elena sent us uh, yesterday, so thank you for that. Um, this video uh, will show Elena plays uh, with her hair, and with the hair occluder that we have in the template, um, we get a really good uh, mask of the hair. Um, but an issue that we have is that we don't know if the hair is uh, occluding the ear, occluding the earring itself. Uh, the hair could be behind the ear or on top of it. Um, so let me just turn on the hair occlusion real quick, so you'll see how it was in the template. Um, so we just get a, a texture of the hair and it will occlude uh, the earring, uh, even if the hair is behind the ear. Right, so uh, there is ways, uh, we enable ways for the users to play with the, how strong the occluder will work and uh, its feathering and so on. Um, but this new component, the hair visibility, uh, it's a really cool technology that gets really much better results. Uh, so it's really easy to set up. I'll show it to you real quickly. We'll just, uh, I've added the component to my resource folder and I'll just drag and drop it into the scene hierarchy here at the top. I'll call it head visible. And what it does, it actually uh, it looks and checks to see if the hair actually occludes different landmarks of the face. Um, so here in the inspector, you can see all the different landmarks. And what we're interested in right now is uh, actually the bottom of the ear, right? So let's check the left uh, ear bottom and right ear bottom. And what it will do, it will very uh, intelligently decide whether to use the occluder or not use the occluder and how much to use it. Uh, and it works for each ear separately and you can see the results here. 
So it's really easy to set up and we think uh, it gives much better results than the, using the previous occluder. Um, so you can use it for either earrings or other face landmarks. Um, thank you, Elena, for making this video for us. You're most welcome. <laughs> Um, so that's the first component. Um, the second component I want to show you uh, is the zoom image component. So in the earring template, um, we had a zoom button that once the user pressed it, uh, there would be subtle zoom effect to the center of the screen. Um, we we've thought it was really useful and could be beneficial for other earring, uh, jewelry, try and, and lenses in general. So we created a new custom component called uh, zoom image. And I'll show you how to set this one up. Um, so just let's go over the, the camera hierarchy. We have the earrings camera, uh, same as in the template. Also three earrings and the earring selector script that uh, is connected to the carousel. So the user can um, switch earrings. And we have the zoom camera, which is just an orthographic uh, camera, uh, which doesn't do much right now, and a UI camera that has the carousel. Um, so what I'll do, I'll just add uh, an image, um, screen image, to the zoom camera, uh, which will build the hierarchy that's needed for the zoom component. So it has the screen region, and the screen transform, and an image. So the image uh, is something that we can delete, we don't need it. And instead of the image, we can just type in zoom and add the zoom component. Um, so we're almost done here. All we need to do is uh, reference the camera that we want the zoom to use as its input. And I'll just drag and drop it here. And you can immediately see a new image, which is already zoomed. So in the scene view, you can see that we can uh, manipulate this image same as we would do with any other image so we can just decide where it's the best place to place it and uh, we have this cool color shader uh, that's actually another asset from the asset library which is called the 2d shape uh, shader uh, which will let you the user set up a different cut up shape so here it's a more rectangle shape but you can uh, select it and manipulate the different uh, parameters here. So let's say we want to have a circle cutout. Uh, we can play with the width and the roundness, reload the lens, and now it's a different uh, shape. So you can um, very easily play with it. Uh, another cool feature uh, that we added to the zoom component. So of course we'll have the zoom multiplier uh, slider, uh, the ability to a touch pen, so the user can use uh, touch to pen the zoom. Um, but the one really cool feature that we have is point of interest. So we can actually tell the zoom component uh, where to focus on. So we can tell the point of interest uh, to always stay on the same place of the ear. So let's check uh, the point of interest checkbox. And now we need to reference the object here. So I can just select one of the earrings. Let's do it the right ear. And Amri, while you're doing that, we actually have a question from our live audience. Uh, I hope I pronounced it correctly. Satan uh, is asking, is, uh, first of all, saying great workshop. And then the question is, how can we make the hand occluder have the best performance and i think this is probably in relations to the jewelry application um but if you have any other tips please let us know right so um actually for this example i deleted the, the physics hands uh, which uh, comes with the occlusion built-in uh, but what uh, users can do uh, to, to make it work a little bit better is here on the left in the resources uh, panel you can select the physics root uh, wall setting and play with the simulation rate. So this is actually the rate of the physics simulation. And you can drag it as high as 240, um, which is the rate of the physics simulation. Uh, the higher it will be, uh, the greater the chances that we can uh, 
detect the collision between the hand and the earrings themselves. Thank you. Sure. So let me just jump back to the Zoom image component. And one final uh, thing I want to show here is the output material. So right now we're using the 2D shapes shader from the asset library, but we can also use um, a regular, the default image material. So let's switch to that. And now it's a regular image material. We can use it for a full frame uh, zoom if we'd like. Uh, other than that, we have the advanced features. We can turn on anti-aliasing and uh, the uh, move uh, speed. So if we move the zoom, how fast it will take uh, for the zoom to center back again and the touch sensitivity, which is uh, might be a bit different between phones. Uh, so that's the zoom component. And I want to show you a couple of examples that we did with the zoom. So maybe it will give you some ideas. Um, let's disable this uh, zoom camera and drag this zoom camera in. So basically it has two examples, one of a full frame um, zoom and the other is for a picture in picture kind of zoom. All right, so what we did here, I'll move back to the original preview video. Um, we added a little script that will actually move between the left and right ear according to the head rotation of the user. Um, we were thinking of a way to help the user look and, and see the earring itself uh, while he's tilting the head. Um, so immediately the, the point of interest of the earring will uh, change according, according to the head rotation. Uh, so that's a picture in picture example. And the other example is using full frame. Um, so when the user will turn his head to the left or to the right, uh, the whole image will zoom in accordingly with an offset to the correct ear. So that's two cool examples that uh, we have for Zoom. Uh, looking forward to see what they, our community will use it for. And last but not least, I would like to show some additions that uh, we did to the chain script, which is the script that's used for physics setup. And as you mentioned before, this uh, this could be a bit of a technical challenge uh, with a lot of uh, requirements and uh, and setup uh, manual setup to do. So we change it a little bit. And thanks to your feedback from uh, Stella and uh, Joel. Um, we made it much more user-friendly, hopefully. So uh, let me show the new way of uh, setting up the physics. Let Stella be the judge now, Omri. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, right, I mean, this is real alpha, Omri. This is really exciting. <laughs> You're doing all of this today. Thank you. Cool. Um, so for this example, um, let's first remove the zoom, we won't get this. Okay, so the, the original um, template, we can switch between the earrings. And now I'm going to keep only the gold earring for this uh, uh, physics setup for now. So let me disable all the other earrings and the selector and turn it back up. Okay, so that's the gold earring. Um, as you can see, the chain at the bottom is rigged and moved uh, in a physically accurate way. Um, so let's see the old setup and the new setup. So first of all, as was mentioned here, we need the chain script to be uh, in the hierarchy on a scene object which is not tracked or uh, animated. Uh, this is no longer the case, um, but that's why we had it here on a separate scene object. Uh, other than that, we had to manually put all the references and then again, manually add a physics body to the parent object of the first joint and have it as intangible and non-dynamic. That's a lot of setup. So we decided we'll try to make it much easier for the users. So first, let's remove the old setup. All right, I'll delete the physics body here and I'll delete the old 
chain anchor as in object. Okay, so now we can see that one earring uh, is not moving in any physical way. But now it's really, really supposed to be really easy to set it up. So we'll just go to the any scene object that we'd like. I chose the low bright one. And let's add the chain custom component to it, which is very similar to the previous one. Uh, first of all, you can see we changed uh, how it looked a little bit, so it'll be easier to understand what's going on. One section is for the chain shape, the other is for the mass, and the third one is for some advanced setup, such as uh, damping, matter, and uh, anchor both ends, which is more relevant for necklaces, and we'll show that in the future template. Um, so all we need to do now to set it up, uh, we just need to give it one reference uh, of the chain base, which will be the first joint. We just drag and drop it here, and you can see it already acts in a physically accurate way. Uh, one last thing I can do is just change the, the weight here, because that's the settings that we had before, which is uh, weights less in the base of the earrings and weigh, weighs more at the end of it. So you saw we just needed one reference, the first joint, didn't really matter where we replaced the chain script uh, on which scene object, and that's it. And as was mentioned earlier, I really recommend uh, turning on the debug checkboxes while developing so you can see um, the physics uh, collider, the constraints, and it will help you debug and better understand what's uh, working or not working correctly with your physics setup. Um, so these were three changes that uh, we just finished integrating uh, into the template. Um, you could find the assets in the asset library, and I hope uh, you will find it beneficial. Amri, thank you so much. I'm sure anybody who's watching right now, actually Angelique mentioned that she's um, going to be working on uh, a line of virtual jewelry. So I'm sure these tools will come in super handy. And I cannot wait to see how Team Devils will actually use all of these and new improvements. Um, thank you so much for coming on the stream and, and sharing all of these tips and news and just breaking it down for us. Um, I'm going to take a quick look at our chat to see if there are any questions um, so that we give our viewers an opportunity to ask Stella, Lauren, Susie, or Omri, anything that could be on your mind, anything they talked about today. Um, so yeah, but otherwise, I just want to say super awesome to have you back. Uh, great to have the entire team. Well, I guess not the entire team, Jevils, but last time we were missing Lauren. It's great to have Lauren here today. And of course, it's always fantastic to have our own Snap AR engineers so that they can give us a little bit extra of a taste of um, what they've improved and what else is coming your way. Um, thank you all so much. We actually have a question from Flavia. Uh, if I want to showcase my creations, is there a way to have the app running without showing any UI while I use a filter? Um, whoever wants to take that, go ahead. Oh, Amr, you're muted. <laughs> Uh, yes, yeah, so I can take this one. Uh, let me just share the screen once again. Thank you. Cool. So um, here in the scene, scene config, we have two uh, two references: one for the capture target and one for the live target. And the live target is the uh, is what the user sees uh, on the app while he runs your filter, and the capture target is what will be recorded. Um, once a user uh, will press uh, the record button. And here in the preview window, you can switch between the live feed here on the left of the, this panel. Uh, so between the live camera and the capture camera. So if you'll switch to the capture mode, you will see how this uh, lens will look like when you recapture and record a video or an image of it. And in the live camera, you would see how it will look like in the app. So you can see that uh, in the live camera, we'll, we'll have the carousel. And in the capture camera, we didn't have the carousel. And the way we did that is uh, the way um, we set up the render textures here. Um, so the live target, if we look at it, uh, it will get its 
feed from the render target. Well, the capture target gets its feed uh, um, from a different texture. Omri, I think uh, what uh, I think I was a misunderstanding. I think what Flavia actually wants to ask is, uh, you know, before when we had Snap Camera, we had an opportunity to showcase these uh, collection pieces on like a big screen, for example, right? And have people like come on like the camera of the, of the stream essentially and try them on like at an exhibition imagine that right it was kind of something that we did actually with jabbles last year at an exhibition in new york city and it worked so well and people were like so freaking excited about this right and i think that is kind of the question like how can i take the ui of all of this away right so in figma for example if you want to show the proto prototype of a UX or a UI design, right, you can kind of like separate that from the user interface of Figma. It, will there be an option or is there currently an option to do that at Snap? I think that was kind of the question. Okay, okay. So uh, Snap just, uh, we just released the uh, camera kit SDK. Um, yeah. And that's uh, something you can um, uh, use to build your own apps with uh, Snap technology. That is awesome. Thanks. Oh, so can you post that in the in the chat so yeah. we can take a look at that? I'll Thank drop you it for sure. Um, I should mention that at the moment, I believe that uh, CamKit SDK is uh, in closed beta. So you would uh, want to, Flavi, you'd want to um, submit an application uh, and then you actually get access to the team as well. But, um, you know, we're hoping that that'll be a way, you know, for all of our AR creators to distribute their AR creations outside of a Snapchat, um, you know, whether it's in your own app um, or otherwise. So I'll drop a link to that in chat in just a second. And Stella, thank you so much for clarifying. I think you probably were on to the actual question. I appreciate it. Uh, we'll drop a link and then uh, we'll check our chat in a second to see if there are any more questions. I think there is another solution because uh, Snap recently released a web-based Snapchat, right? So you can actually connect uh, Snapchat, um, like open it on the internet and then uh, try the lenses on. Uh, you cannot uh, connect it to, to your Google Meet like we used to, um, but you can uh, showcase it uh, like we did uh, during the NFT NYC last year. Uh, this would be maybe a solution for, for events like this. Yeah. Awesome. And I'm just checking the chat. It doesn't seem like we have uh, any more questions. So maybe this is a good time for us to round up. And um, Omri and myself will actually, I have to thank Omri too, since Omri um, has another full-time job here at Snap to actually be building tools for you all. But um, Omri, thank you for joining us. Super grateful for your time. And of course, thank you so much, um, Zuzi, Stella, Lauren, for finding the time to come back and do this again with us. I know that last time we just had so much more that we wanted to show and talk about. And so I really appreciate your time and your busy schedules and your busy life to come here, share your knowledge, your experience, um, and get our viewers excited to actually go ahead, try out a template um, that you'll use to make the octopus earrings and like i said it is just so clever of you to you know to use the tools that snap already provided to save time to then come up with your uh, augmented reality creations and i appreciate your transparency and being really open and you know kind of giving away a little bit of the secret sauce of how devil's masterpieces are made for all of our ar enthusiasts and fashionistas to try out so Thank you all so much. It's been an absolute pleasure. We hope to uh, see you back sometime soon and we're looking forward to seeing more creations from your team. Um, thank you. And to all of our viewers today, thank you for being with us. Mm -hmm. I appreciate your time and asking all the questions, sharing your positive feedback and just complimenting our presenters uh, on their presentations and their work. It's been wonderful to be online here with you today and we'll see you next time. Hi, thank, thank you. you. Bye. 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 <laughs>